PC games are so large these days that you can very quickly use up all available disk on your PC or laptop. This can be more of an issue with laptops, some of which only have a single M.2 drive, or no 2.5 inch drive bay for larger and cheaper hard drive storage. So let's see how a NAS can help and find out how well we can actually play games off one over the network. A NAS, or network attached storage, is basically just a box that contains a bunch of hard drives that you connect to your network. You can then access this larger storage over the network. For this testing, I'm using the ASUS Tor AS5304T 4-bay NAS. The key features are that it's got two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, four drive bays, quad core CPU, and four gig of memory. Interestingly, this one also has a HDMI 2.0A port, allowing you to stream video directly from the NAS. The guys at Gear Seekers have covered the steps to set up this same model. You can find more information on that in their video if you're after it. In my test setup, I've got four 16 terabyte Ironwolf hard drives from Seagate and these are designed with 24-7 NAS operation in mind. Which is perfect for me because I never turn my NAS off. I leave it on overnight backing up everything to the cloud, which in my case is about 10 gig of 4K video that I shoot each day. You of course don't need to start out with as much space as this. You could start out with one or two smaller drives and expand from there in the future if you need more space. You could also go for a smaller 2-bay NAS. And this ASUS Tor one actually allows you to connect additional expansion units for up to an additional 192 terabytes. Although you can save some money by using cheaper drives, if you're storing important data, I'd highly suggest picking NAS drives like Seagate's Ironwolf series, as they'll be less likely to fail in a NAS environment over time. Basically, they're just made to run all the time and also deal with the increased levels of vibration you get when running multiple drives so close together. Regardless of which NAS you're using, you'll likely have a few RAID options to choose from. I usually go for RAID 6, which means the array can survive two disks failing at once. But in this case, I've chosen RAID 10 for a mixture of redundancy and performance. I want to try to put the 2.5 gigabit connection to use after all. Luckily, I happen to have the ASUS mothership in for review, as it's got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Here are the results from Crystal Diskmark when reading and writing to the NAS with the 2.5 gigabit connection. We're close to 300 megabytes per second for both the read and write, which is well above typical gigabit speeds. In this test, I was fully saturating the network connection both ways. So the RAID 10 array was sufficient for a single connection. I also manually set the network speed to 1 gigabit and performed the test again, just to show what a standard connection would get. And as we can see, the results are a fair bit lower compared to the 2.5 results. The ASUS mothership also has Wi-Fi 6, so if I also had a Wi-Fi 6 access point, I would be able to access the NAS really fast wirelessly too. But I'm still living in the past with a Wi-Fi 4 access point. Here's how long it took to load up a game, Watch Dogs 2 in this case, from different storage options. Loading from the SSD was the fastest, as we'd expect. It's fast local storage, but it also costs more and we're limited by how much we can fit into our device. The 2.5 gigabit connection from the NAS was next, though realistically in this test it wasn't even that far behind the SSD load time. And then the gigabit connection was slower still. I'd expect loading from a 2.5 inch hard drive in a laptop to be around the gigabit connection speed, as the reads and writes from a single hard drive are typically around that speed. It will of course vary by disk though, a 7200 RPM drive should outperform a 5400 one for example. Unfortunately I couldn't test that here as the ASUS mothership has no 2.5 inch drive bay to install one. A good example where your only option is expensive and smaller M.2 SSDs. Well maybe not as it has 3 M.2 slots, but many other laptops just have one. The ASUS GX701 comes to mind. It will also depend on the specific game too. I also tried The Witcher 3 and had the same 23 second result to get into the game regardless of where it was loading from. I was rebooting between tests, so unless it caches to local storage, this confirms that it will vary. For the most part, game load times are what will be the most noticeable when you're storing the game files on different media, such as a NAS, as this is when the bulk of data is read. The actual frame rates while playing games will see no changes in most cases so you shouldn't lose much performance while playing. Generally, once a game is fully loaded, everything within the area will be cached in memory, so you'll only experience slowdowns when assets needed to be loaded from disk. 
I've actually tested this in an older video with more games. But just for example, with this single game, we can see there are no real differences to frame rate. It's margin of error stuff. Although most people today don't currently have 2.5 gigabit capable network devices, as we've just seen, in terms of FPS, the network transfer speed doesn't really matter. It only affected load times as we saw earlier. For every laptop that arrives for me to test, I need to test around 1.5 terabytes worth of games on it. As I live in Australia, the land of the crappy internet, downloading this much data multiple times a week for every machine is not feasible. So for me, a NAS is essential. I copy my games from the NAS over to the laptop and then run them off local storage rather than the NAS. This is because for my benchmarks, I want to provide as close as to the results you'd actually see if you bought the machine yourself. Plus, when I have to open up 20 games multiple times, this is greatly sped up if the machine has an SSD. For my personal workflow, having a local centralized repository for games that are kept up to date saves me a lot of time, as I can just copy them over when needed. This could be a good option for you too. Steam has a good option to let you move games between drives. So you could just map the NAS to a drive letter and then move games back and forth as needed. The copying process does still take quite a while with standard gigabit ethernet. Although the ASUS Tor NAS that I've been testing with here does have 2.5 gigabit support, most laptops I get in for testing don't have this. I've only seen it in more premium options so far, but presumably that will change in future. The times where I have had it though, like with the ASUS Mothership, I can get started testing sooner due to the faster network speeds. A NAS solution definitely isn't for everyone. It really depends what you do and how you access your data. For me it works very well, and multiple people access it from the home network to get files, especially games. So we don't need to worry about getting large drives in all of our PCs and laptops. I basically just get a fast NVMe M.2 SSD for a boot drive and use the NAS for mass storage. There's so much more it can do too, I've only just scratched the surface here as I think these use cases are probably going to be most beneficial for most of my audience. You can install different apps to do pretty much whatever you need. Another quick example would be if you're a game streamer and also save copies of your stream to disk, you could have these saved to the larger NAS storage and not have to worry about your machine running out. Let me know if you run a NAS at your place. And if you just store everything locally on your machine, is it something you'd consider upgrading to in the future if you need more space? Let me know in the comments, and if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future tech videos like this one.